Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Imad Afifi. I'm a director of ASIC Design in Avicenna. And I'm presenting an ultra low power, multi terabit micro LED interconnect for chip to chip communication. Our solution is addressing mainly three challenges. The first challenge is that energy usage. It's estimated that by 2030, 20% of the global energy will be consumed by information communication technology. Most of this energy is consumed in moving data. So our solution is aiming to reduce this energy. The second challenge is data connections are choking the ICs. So the bandwidth is not growing as fast as the flops. As you see in the graph on the right bottom, you see the flops are increasing much faster than the bandwidth. So our aim is to increase this bandwidth. The third challenge is high-speed surges. High-speed surges are hitting the speed limits, the consume area, and the add latency. And our solution uses parallel versus serial, so that, that aims to reduce the usage of high-speed surges. So our solution is leveraging the existing micro-LED technology that's used in the display and lighting industry. Uh, gallium nitride uh, technology is used widely in lighting, lightning, and also is becoming more used in the display technology. There are already uh, products today uh, by Apple, Samsung, and Meta that are using micro-LEDs, and they use uh, gallium nitride micro-LEDs transferred to silicon backplane or CMOS chips. So we name our technology Light Bundle, and here I can show the components used in the Light Bundle technology. The main component is the ASIC chip. The ASIC chip has two hexagonal arrays. The hexagonal array on the right is the transmit array with micro LEDs transferred on top of it with a picture of the micro LEDs on top of the CMOS chip. The left hexagonal is the receive uh, array and it has a PD array transferred on top of it. We also use an alignment socket to align the connector, uh, connecting the fiber, the multi-core fiber to the CMOS chip. The picture here shows the final assembly with the connector, the multi-core fiber, and the chip under it. Here we can show a cable with the self-aligning with the two fibers in it. Every fiber is a multi-core fiber. And the ferrule picture is on the top right. You can see the hexagonal shape with the 304 fibers packed in it, 50 micron pitch, and the position error standard deviation is 0.4 micron. This fiber is available in glass and plastic. Okay, here I, I present different interconnect technologies available today. Uh, on the x-axis, you have the distance in meters. The y-axis is a figure of merit in gigabit per second per millimeter divided by picojoule per bit. On the left side, electrical connections dominate. You have short reach surges, you have HBM, die to die connections. On the right side, optical interconnect dominate. You have silicon photonics and Vixel. And the area in the middle here that is the area we are trying to address between one centimeter and 10 meters. In this area, LED, micro LED technology has superior performance because it can deliver longer distance at lower power. This is a picture of the ASIC that we have designed. The ASIC has 304 elements, uh, LED drivers with the micro LEDs transferred on top of it. The pitch is 50 micrometer, and 
on the left side, you can see the hexagonal for the receive array. It has the PD transferred on top of it, and this entire chip has a throughput of 1.2 terabit per second. Every lane is running at four gigabit per second, and we have 304 channels. The link power is one picojoule per bit, and the chip has D2D OHBI interface on the bottom and digital functionality for testing, PRBS generators, checkers, and open eye monitor. Our uh, micro LED is grown on sapphire substrate. And then it's, uh, we have laser liftoff to transfer the micro LEDs on top of the CMOS chip. And the micro LEDs are solder bonded. Our micro LEDs are eight micro in diameter. They run at four gigabit per second. And they consume 500 microamp, which translates into 0.5 picojoule per bit. We have already demonstrated a 14 gigabit per second micro LED with pre-emphasis. As you see on the curve on the right, the bandwidth of the micro LED is proportional to the current density. And we can achieve up to four, gigabit, uh, four gigahertz bandwidth. And this picture is an eye diagram captured from the micro LED uh, assembled on our chip. One thing I want to emphasize here is the excellent high temperature performance of micro LEDs. We have already demonstrated performance up to 235 degrees. This picture on the top is the PD array. It's manufactured in silicon on insulator and its backside eliminated via etched cavities. The picture on the bottom here, you can see the cavities under the PDs. These PDs are lateral PDs with very low capacitance. Capacitance is about 10 femtofarad, which enables the TIA power to be very low. The power consumption is about 0.35 picojoule per bit. This is the eye monitor output. Uh, we capture the TIA output, and this is the bit error rate versus received power. You can see that we can achieve 10 to the minus 12 bit error rate at 23 microamp received power. So what applications are we targeting? The first easy application is Ethernet active optical cable. We have control over both sides. So we can deploy our multi-core fiber. The second application, which is our main application, is chip-to-chip -chip communication. So in this picture, you can see two interposers communicating through light bundle technology and CPUs communicating to HPM memory over light bundle technology. The third application is automotive. automotive uh, takes advantage of the high temperature tolerance of LEDs. And the fourth application is camera sensors, which requires high bandwidth and low power. So in summary, our solution can achieve high energy efficiency. Today we can do one picojoule per bit, and in the future we target half of that. We have high bandwidth density. We can achieve better than one terabit per second per millimeter square. And in the future, we're targeting 10 terabit per second per millimeter square. Our latency is low, two nanosecond plus time of flight. And temperature tolerance is better than 125 degrees C, going to 150 degrees C in the future. Thank you. Questions? Uh, yeah. I had a question. So today, if you look at the 512 lane switches, they probably consume about like 35% of the, the die area. Um, so in your, and those are running at like about 100, let's say 10 or 112 gigabit per second. And if you run these you know, at five gig, 
potentially have to have like maybe 12,000 or even maybe even more surgeries. Have you looked at, you know, how much area would you consume if you, when you have tens of thousands of surgeries on your die that would have to operate at like four or five gigabit per second? Yeah, we actually are working on a solution for 12 terabit per second uh -huh. and uh, using perhaps four chips. So in the future, we are targeting uh, 8 gigabit per second and 12 gigabit per second per LED. But uh, the efficiency of LEDs is highest at a lower frequency. But we, can add, we are addressing the HBM uh, solution first. And we, we have a solution for 12 terabit per second that is doubles the HBM density that's available today. On interposer. But, but would you be able to integrate like tens of thousands of surveys on a because you, you would need to have a surveys, you know, running at let's say five gigabit, right? Because today, you know, as I mentioned, five hundred twelve lane survey probably consumes like maybe three hundred a score millimeter of the die. Yeah. And maybe you you could these are running slower, maybe these surveys could be denser. But well it it translates eventually to how much is the beachfront. Uh, that you can achieve with service. Yeah, but I'm, I'm just giving you area density because at some point you run out of the die. <coughs> let's say the maximum die size, let's say 900 square millimeter, you can, right? Yes. Have you looked at that problem? Um, so you, you're saying that the density of surges on right, the like, chip? Like today, you know, like let's say the largest die, single radical, right, probably let's say 900 square millimeter, you're probably going to consume 35% of it to put those 512, and maybe your surgery is running slower, maybe it could be smaller, let's say half the size. But it's still, if you have well, to put tens of thousands, how do you do that? We don't use any surgeries. No. But there has to be a surgery in the no. ASIC to drive it. You can't drive it without the surgeries. It, it's a parallel interface. So it doesn't use any surgeries on either side. Yeah. So you're just going to do you like it, It's like a D to D interface. Yeah. We forward the clock, yes, that's correct. You're just going to forward the yeah. clock. And um, yeah. across, OK. I have to think about it if that sort of scheme would. Yeah, we can talk OK, offline. thank you. Yeah. Another question? Anybody? OK, thank you.